The people are depressed and angry. We can't live with each other, and we can't live with ourselves, so we're all medicated. We pass each other on the streets, but if we talk, it's meaningless robotic communication. Around this time last year, the, the leaves were starting to fall, and the obvious coldness of Canada was coming, just like it is today. But I am not one for Christmas or winter. I hate the cold. But this winter was supposed to be different. You see, I was happily in love with the girl from back home, and it was amazing. I was at cloud nine. For eight months, we went on. I was traveling from Moncton to Halifax every day, or every weekend, sorry, where I was studying, and then back to Moncton, where she was. I was spending this time with her, and we had a great time. I was also balancing my schoolwork. I was balancing my long-term, long-distance relationship. I was balancing the company that I was currently working for. And it all became too much. So after eight months, shortly after that, I started losing myself. I became a hybrid of others, and I was no longer the original Tyler. I was just Tyler. It is at that point that, after eight months, I, I became nothing. And, and it was at that point where my relationship took a turn for the worst. You see, there was an unfortunate event of unloyalty that occurred, and it destroyed me. It made me even worse than I was before. I was less original than the obvious Tyler. So I remember myself being in my dorm room at, in university and just crying and shaking uncontrollably, even more than today, of course. <laughs> and I, I, I couldn't do anything about it, but there were three questions that continued to run through my mind. And it was, where do I go from here? How could I deserve this? And most importantly, is this something that everyone is experiencing? You see, it was at that point that I decided to take mental health as something that I wanted to really study up on. It was kind of weird. I had a Bible, basically, of stats, of things of mental health. So did you know that one in 10 experienced depression? And after your second lapse of depression, you are 80% more susceptible to a third lapse. After your third, physicians will chronically, er, tell you that you are chronically ill and they might put you on antidepressants. I was passing out these, these Bibles to people. People thought I was crazy, but I loved it because I thought I was making a change. And it was at that point that I realized that teaching others and leading a social change is what I came here to do. If it be through teachers, through parents, through family members and friends, any leader needs to know these things. 63% of people within an urban environment have experienced gastrointestinal digestive disorders, anxiety, depression. Robin Williams died this August, favorite actor. He died of suicide, did he? I say otherwise. I think he died of depression. Suicide is a byproduct of depression. So I put on an initiative to make a change. It was called Rack Moncton. We handed out 360 sunflowers downtown Moncton. It was at this point where I realized my true potential. I realized the amazing ability of sharing just a split second of happiness with someone else hit me like three times more than how happy they were. And so now I want to call out to all parents. Let it be future parents, like my generation, for example, or parents today. We need to understand the importance of opening up the conversation about anxiety control and depression. <laughs> I like that moment too. It is crucial for us to realize the extreme importance of opening up this conversation though. And so, like I said, this is a call to current and future parents, such as my generation, to open up this conversation. So I am proud to share with you today a letter that I wrote for my son or my daughter in the future. 
People cut others down for, out of jealousy, amusement, or for no reason at all. It's because there's something broken inside of them. You are just a target because you live your life boldly and loudly. They won't understand you, and they certainly will never understand me. But that is okay, as long as your tears never turn to stone, and you don't become bitter like them. There will be times where you find yourself in an unhappy situation, but please just remember that you will never be happy when looking for happiness in yourself first. Because it is a selfish act. Anytime selfishness prevails, you can't be happy. But when you seek for others' happiness, that is when it comes back to you. Liberate yourself in the thoughts of what others may be thinking of you. And instead, focus on what you can do to make them feel better about themselves. That way, you are making an impression without even trying to impress. Being happy is nothing short of a skill. You need not to look for it in a capsule or a pill. All of us are beautiful in our own very ways, and I hope that you guys can see this in yourself one day. Thank you. <laughs>